democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermin Sheikh. We turn now to President Trump's escalation of U.S. airstrikes in Iraq and Syria. According to the group Air Wars, at least 1,782 civilians were killed last month in coalition airstrikes. The civilian death toll could be as high as nearly 3,500. This comes as the battle for the Iraqi city of Mosul enters its seventh month. The United Nations is warning the city is facing a humanitarian catastrophe, perhaps the worst in the entire conflict. More than 400,000 people are trapped in parts of the city, still under control of the Islamic State. Meanwhile, in Syria, Human Rights Watch has concluded the U.S. did, in fact, bomb a mosque last month, killing at least 38 people. The Pentagon claimed the drone strike on March 16th targeted a meeting of al Qaeda members, but Human Rights Rights Watch has concluded the victims were civilians who'd gathered to pray. Human Rights Watch said it found no evidence that al-Qaeda or any other armed group were meeting in the mosque. We're joined now by Anand Gopal, a journalist and fellow at the Nation Institute, recently returned from the Middle East, has reported extensively from the region. Let's start with Mosul and Iraq. You just recently returned from Iraq, Anand. Talk about what people in Mosul are saying. What is happening there? Well, people in Mosul uh, find themselves caught between airstrikes and um, terror from ISIS. Uh, I've been in touch with families every day who are describing just unbelievable scenes of carnage. Um, one family that I spoke to, uh, they were cowering in their basement, uh, the whole family of six people, for, for hours, and fighting was nearby. An ISIS sniper climbed onto the roof and, and took shots at the, the Iraqi forces, and the Iraqi forces called in an American airstrike, which uh, flattened the entire house, killing the entire family. Um, I'm in touch with another family, which uh, is three separate houses that are joined together, and there was fighting in the next neighborhood, and somebody called in an airstrike um, and destroyed all three houses pretty much wiping out uh, 17 members of an extended family. How is the U.S. involved with this? this these are all American airstrikes. Um, there are some Iraqi airstrikes as well, but for the most part, these are American or other coalition member airstrikes. Uh, these are being called in either by special forces on the ground or by Iraqi forces. But some people suggest that it's only because of coalition airstrikes that so much of Mosul has been reclaimed from ISIS control. Well, this is this is true. Uh, without the coalition airstrikes, um, this uh, city would still be under ISIS. But there's a question of the way in which the airstrikes are being conducted. And really, what we're looking at right now is probably the biggest humanitarian catastrophe since the 2003 invasion. And this is coming not just from the airstrikes, but the way in which ISIS is essentially holding large population um, percentage of the population hostage. There's now about 400,000 people in western Mosul who are not allowed to leave. Uh, I spoke to relatives of one family, a husband and wife, who uh, paid smugglers to try to leave West, uh, West Mosul. They were caught by ISIS, and they were both beheaded. And, and all this is happening on a daily basis. At the same time, people are running out of food. There's um, now cases of malnutrition among, among toddlers and children. Has there been a change on the ground since Trump took office? Not really. Um, what Trump has been doing in Iraq is essentially carrying out Obama's policy. It, it seems from here like it's an escalation, but it's actually not an escalation. What's happened is that the phase of the battle has changed. East Mosul, um, the houses are kind of spread out and they're larger, so you don't see as many casualties. West Mosul is a really densely packed uh, area. Um, you bomb one house, you're going to hit three or four houses, and that's been the main change. Uh, Obama actually uh, relaxed the rules of engagement a number of times, including most recently in de late December. December, where he made it easier for uh, forces on the ground to call in airstrikes. And I think this is actually the biggest uh, cause for the spike in civilian casualties, nothing that Trump has done. Well, um, the U.S. itself has admitted how difficult it's been uh, uh, to get into Mosul and to take over, and that despite the fact that it's been going on, the attempt to reclaim the city for six months, that Iraqi forces have managed only now uh, or very recently to get into the city and, and start fighting militants. Do you have any idea from your time there and speaking to people why it's been so difficult? Well, particularly now in West, West Mosul, you're talking about very narrow streets, alleyways, covered markets, um, and it's really something that has to go block by block. And it's it's not a bad thing that it ta it's taking a long time, because the longer it takes, that means that the more careful that the forces are being with civilian casualties. Uh, the concern is if they really go quickly, that's when you see a lot of civilians being killed. And then you have this report in Syria, the Human Rights Watch report. We'd already reported on the bombing of the mosque. It was just the Pentagon who was saying that they had bombed militant group. 
Talk about what you understand is happening here. I mean, there was enormous attention paid to uh, Syria last week, because uh, President Trump saw pictures of children dying of being gassed. The U.S. bombs this airfield. The way the media made it sound is that was the only time the U.S. was doing any bombing in Syria. Right. What a lot of people don't realize is that that was actually probably like the 8,000th airstrike that the U.S. has carried out over the last three years. Um, it's only the first time they've ever targeted the regime. In fact, they've pretty much assiduously avoided targeting the regime for the last three or four years. They've targeted ISIS, they've targeted al Qaeda, they've targeted members of the legitimate opposition, and they've killed many civilians. Uh, for example, last June or last July, um, under Obama, there was a bombing that killed uh, over 200 civilians. And it didn't get, really get much attention here. Um, but um, this has been going on for a number of years. And the mosque. Uh, yeah, and, and it's it's clear that the U.S. has uh, hit this mosque, and a um, number of investigations have showed that, uh, that these are civilians, um, that there was, uh, if there were high-ranking members of al-Qaeda, as the U.S. claims, um, there were also dozens and dozens of civilians there. And, and we clearly have so much more to talk about, and we will, uh, right after this broadcast ends, and we're going to post online at democracynow.org. Anand Gopal is a journalist and fellow at the Nation Institute, recently returned from the Middle East, has extensively reported from the region, author of No Good Men. Among the Living, America, the Taliban, and the War Through Afghan Eyes. That does it through our show. We'll be broadcasting.